Welcome to Restoration Community Church. My name is Jason. I'm so glad you're here. It's kind of strange for me. I started as a pastor the week that we went from live services to online services. So I didn't really get to meet most of you, but it's great to know you and connect with you digitally like this. My wife and I started attending Restoration about a month, like February-ish, before we started. And one of the things I asked when I came to Restoration, I go, do I belong here? Are these my people? Will I get along with these people? Do you think we could fit in here? And for that month and for the last few months that I've been on staff, I have been so excited and so thankful to belong to this community. Don't we all ask that though? Do we belong? I mean, I ask that all the time. As I was preparing this message I got really insecure and nervous going, I don't know if I belong. Who am I to come up and speak in front of the whole church or get in front of a camera? I am no Ron Johnson. I don't do cat jokes. I told my wife, do I need to shave my head? Are they, do they like bald guys? Maybe that's, she deterred me from it. But we're all asking that question, do we belong? My wife and I and our family, we moved from Boulder to Denver in January. But November, we were searching for schools. And my nine-year-old, Sayla, she's in third grade, and she loved the school in Boulder she was at. She was there her entire preschool through third grade, and all her friends were there. And she was like, I do not want to leave. So I told her, I go, Sayla, you can stay in the school for the spring semester, I will drive you to Boulder, but will you try one school out for me and just go shadow this November? So we took Sayla to this school in Lakewood that she was going to shadow. And I was just praying. I was like, oh, I hope she makes a friend. I hope she feels like she belongs. And I go and pick Sayla up after her day of shadowing. And I look at Sayla and I just go, so how was it? And she looks up at me. She goes, Dad, I'll go tomorrow. Why do you think that she said that? She felt like she belonged. I remember the first time I ever felt like I belonged. It was in college. It was the first time I felt like I belonged in a Christian group as well. It was these guys that I spent nine weeks with in Breckenridge, Colorado. And it was this summer program where we worked together. We did life together. We hiked together. We got in conflict with one another. But it was amazing because we started to pray with each other. We started to read the Bible together. And for one of the, the first time in my life, I just go, these are my people. I belong here. And it was amazing. See, belonging can change us. But there's also a dark side of belonging. There, there's a belonging that can scar you. Have you ever been in a place where you felt like, I want to belong but you didn't fit in. Ha, I remember my freshman formal, freshman year of high school, I asked the girl of my dreams to go to formal with me. And she said, yes. And so we go to formal, we dance a couple songs. Then she goes over here with her friends. I go over here with my friends, like high schoolers do. And we're hanging out. And then the last song comes on. The DJ plays the last song. Back to One by Brian McKnight. It was my song. And I look around, I'm like, Where's my date? And I see her dancing with another guy. I go, I don't belong. Have you ever walked into a church group where it's your first time there and, and you're like, this is going to be awkward. Hopefully it's not awkward. And then it is because no one interacted with you. You just don't feel like you belong. Or, or maybe you're new to the team or your new job and people treat you poorly because you don't belong. See, belonging can scar us. For some of us, there might even be a relationship where, where, or a friendship where we, we love that person and we were like, we belong together. And then all of a sudden they leave you. You go, oh, I don't belong. See, belonging can change us, but it can also scar us. The question is, is it worth it? And if it's worth it, how do we actually do it? And so today I want to walk you through an unbelievable passage that the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 12. And he pins this eloquent scripture in 12 and 13 that talks about belonging. And he uses an analogy of the human body to help us understand how the church, the followers of Jesus, because the church is not the building. 
The church are people. How the church, the followers of Jesus, are like a human body. And he calls it the body of Christ. So we're going to jump in 1 Corinthians 12, 12. It says this. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. If the foot says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand. That does not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? If one part suffers, the other parts suffer. If one part is honored, all parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. See, what Paul is saying is he's using this analogy, and it's a really interesting analogy because he's kind of flipping an analogy that is part of their culture on its head. See, what people would say in Paul's culture is it would be the idea that we need to distinguish socio and economical classes, and they would call lesser people feet and higher people heads. And Paul's going, that is not how the body of Jesus works. That's not how followers of Jesus works. It's actually completely different. That there is no prejudice. That there is no segregation. That everyone is equal. Everyone is, in, is important. And it, when you bring it together, it becomes a body that is unified, that is diversified, that is amazing. See, our culture always wants to put people in boxes. We want to stereotype people. We want to say that we are higher and you are lesser. But that is not what Jesus wants. Jesus says, my body is to be diversified and unified and together. See, the body is made up of individual people, individual followers of Jesus. Yet, we're all unique. Did you know you're unique? God made you. God loves you. God cares for you. He says that he knits you together in your mother's womb. That he knows every hair on your head. And he deeply loves you. He also gifted you. He made you exactly how you were supposed to do so that you can use your talents, your skills to make up the body of followers of Jesus. Paul is saying, you're not alone. You're not meant to follow Jesus alone. You were built to belong. We were built to belong to the body, to the followers of Jesus. So I'm a recovering homeschool parent. Do I, do I hear any amens out there? I mean, when school shut down during quarantine season, we were like, we can do this. A weekend, we're like, oh my goodness. I don't know how we're going to do it. I had to do third grade math. And I thought, I'm a pretty good, I have a degree in finance. And I realize I can't do third grade math. I, I applaud all you seventh grade parents out there because I don't know how you did it. But we were at the end of our rope. It was two weeks ago. We were at the end of our rope with homeschooling. And my wife is teaching our kindergartner, Judah. He goes to a Christian school. And so they were memorizing a Bible verse out of Hebrews. And they picked a Bible verse that was way too difficult for kindergartners, by the way. And it was like four verses long. And we forgot to help him think through it. And it was a day before the test. And my wife's like, I have no clue how Judah is going to pass this at all. So the next day she gets ready for the test and he doesn't know it. So in her, her darkest moment, Molly also is an angel. She's the most honest, do things by the book of any person I know. So this is so surprising. At her darkest moment, she takes an AirPod and she puts it in Judah's ear and plays the Bible verse so that Judah can recite it. And she turns him like this and he starts going and the guilt just feel, fills her. And she's like, I'm cheating for my kindergartner on a Bible verse. So she didn't actually submit it. She didn't submit it, so she was good. But are we all at the end of our rope? I mean, quarantine season has brought us all to a place where we have stress. We have relational stress. I know there's so much marital stress happening right now. There were vacations missed. There's financial stress. There were those weddings that got postponed or those funerals that you had to miss. We're all feeling stress. I have a friend right now, and she's like, Jason, my love language is touch, and I can't touch anyone right now. Like, 
I don't feel love and my, my heart breaks for her. See, when we're isolated, we feel alone, but we can also start thinking we don't belong, that we don't belong. Wherever you're at, I want you to stop and I want you to look at me right now. I want you to listen right now. You are not alone. See, we are the body of Jesus. When one part suffers, we all suffer. You might be dealing with depression. You might have anxiety. You might feel all this isolation. You might be financially struggling. Your marriage might be on the rocks. You are not alone. You are not alone. Jesus died for you and he brought you to be a part of this body. And when you suffer, we all suffer. When one is honored, we're all honored. You are not alone because you were built to belong. See, there is a mystery, a beauty, and amazement about being the body of Jesus. If you've never made that decision to go, you know what? I want to belong to the body of Jesus. I want to belong to, the, to this way of life, of following Jesus with my life. This is why you shouldn't put it off anymore because life is so hard. You can't do it on your own. You weren't meant to do it alone on your own. You were supposed to do life with the help of Jesus and with the help of the followers of Jesus. Jesus lived a perfect life. He died on a cross and he resurrected again to bring you back from life so that you might not have to do life alone. If you've never made that decision, I want to give you an opportunity at the end of this message to say, I want to commit my life to Jesus. See, we can be a part of an amazing body and we were built to belong. So how do we belong? How do we belong? Well, but wait, the question might be, do we even really want to belong? Like, do we want to belong? I mean, Paul in this next verse is going to try to convince you He's going to try to persuade you and go, I know you might be burned by people. I, might, I know you might be, have those scars from belonging, but I want you to know why you should belong. And in 1 Corinthians 12, 31, he says this. So after all this idea of the body of Christ, he says, so you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. But now let me show you a better way of life that is best of all. So Paul is going, he's like, we're the body of Christ and we're better together. We should be unified. We should be diverse and you can belong to this body. But there's even a better way. What's the better way, Paul? He goes, there's an umbrella that actually covers all of belonging. And if you don't have this, you really are missing out. You will not belong. And the word that is, he is going to use is the word love. Because real relationships come from real love. Real belonging comes from love. And Paul speaks some of the most amazing, beautiful verses in 1 Corinthians 13. And I want you to hear this as he talks about love. And it says this. He goes, if I speak in the tongues of men who are of angels, but I do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and I can fathom all mysteries and knowledge and I can have faith that moves mountains, but I do not love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and I give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not love, I gain nothing. What Paul is saying here is he's going, you can be the most spiritual person in the world. You can look like you have it all together. You can say all the right things. You can grow that business. You can do it God's way of growing that business. Then you can give all your money away. You can know all mysteries. You can have all knowledge. You can speak in the tongues of angels. But if you do not have love, it is worthless. It is nothing. True belonging always comes from true love. True belonging will always come from true love. Belonging is worth it because love is worth it. You can't separate the two. To love, you have to belong. And, Jesus, and what Paul is saying is in the body of Christ, we are to love. 
Love is the umbrella that covers it all. Brene Brown says it this way. I love it. Those who have a strong sense of love and belonging have the courage to be imperfect. Those who have a, have a strong sense of love and belonging have the courage to be imperfect. Isn't this what following Jesus is all about? I don't know about you, but I'm definitely not perfect. To belong, you have to be willing to have this relationship that is full of love and the courage to go, you know what? I don't have it all together. So we, I think we all know this. I think we all want this. I think we all want love in our life. We all want belonging in our life. We desire it, but what we desire also deters us. What draws us pushes us away. Here's what I mean by that. Our past experiences, they shape us. See, belonging changes us, but belonging scars us. So we want it, but we know, I don't know if I want that. See, we want connection, but we go towards protection. We want connection in our lives, but we go towards protection. We protect our friendships. We protect our time, and we protect our hearts. I want this kind of belonging, Jason, but you don't know my life. Like I'm working 60, 70, 80 hours a week and there is no way that I can have this kind of relationship in my life right now. Or for some of you, you're like, if I have to go to one more awkward small group, I mean, I went to that one, that one time and it was so awkward. I felt judged. I I have more experiences of awkwardness from that moment for the rest of my life. I'm not going back. And for a lot of us, we've been burned by people. We've been hurt by people. And you go, I'm not putting my heart back out there again. I'm not doing that again. I don't want to get burned. You know what? I get it. I feel the same way. For me, even as I share this, I have this tension right now. I've been burned by people. I came out of a ministry that was amazing, that I got to lead for 12 years. And I was hurt from some, from some relationships. And there was a masses, massive amount of tension in, in those relationships. And I lost some close friends for a little bit. And I remember looking at my wife, Molly, and just going, I don't know if I ever want to do that again. I never want to get close to people again. So if you feel like I do, I get it. But you know what got me back? You know what has me here speaking to you today? You know what makes me want to belong to the body of Jesus, to followers of Jesus, to come alongside people, to have friends and and be a part of this church? Is because this is where the love is. You got to belong to have love in your life. And even though you're scarred, even the wounds are still there, you got to come back. You got to belong to feel the love and it was so redemptive the other day I got to talk to one of my friends Tim and I was talking to him I'm like man he knows my story he knows my hurts and he knows how I'm a little bit like I don't know if I want to go belong with people and he just looked me at the eye in the eye and he goes Jason I'm so glad you moved to Denver I'm so glad that we're in friendship I'm so glad that we have this deep connection and that we belong And at that moment, I just felt these wounds of my heart start healing. The scars are still there, but it doesn't prevent me from belonging because this is where the love is. You can't love those you don't know. The secret sauce of following Jesus is belonging to the body, belonging with people that follow Jesus and doing it together. So how do we do this practically? Well, there's lots of ways. Restoration, we are trying to do things this summer to to make people feel like they belong because you do belong. We're supposed to be together. Even though we're isolated, we want you to have an atmosphere where you can belong. We're going to have summer at Restoration. We're going to have a lot of things going on in the parking lot where you can bring your family, your friends, and we can just have a great time while social distancing. Then we can also do some service activities. We have some awesome compassion opportunities that we're going to do this summer. And then 
a lot of people are joining digital online groups. We have record amount of people in our digital groups. People are meeting almost every day on video conferencing, just meeting and sharing life with one another and connecting and they're belonging and they're, they're suffering together. They're honoring together. They're side by side as the body of Jesus. And I just want to thank you. If you're leading a group, thank you. Thank you. If you're, if you're a part of a group, thanks for being a part of it and, and really digging into that idea of belonging. And if you're not in a group, oh, no. I, I knew he was going to do this. I knew he was going to try to recruit me to a group. Okay, hold on with me for just one minute. Please, please. We have tried to take every obstacle out of the way. If you're not in a group and you're like me, I don't know if I want to belong. I just want to ask you to try it once. We've taken every obstacle out. We're, we made a, some of our groups six weeks long. They're six weeks, so there's not that much commitment. They're 30 minutes. It's really quick. We just jump on a Zoom call. We talk for a few minutes, catch them on life, and then we look through a passage of the Bible, and then we ask how we can pray for each other, and you're done. You don't have to put pants on. We don't care what you're drinking. You, we just want you to be a part of it. We want you to belong. We want you to be a part of the body of Jesus. And if you're traveling this summer, you can be a part of this group. But you, can watch any, you can come and be a part of it anywhere in the world. I want to challenge you to jump on our website and sign up. And I know there are people right now. I see you watching from Houston, Texas, from Tampa, Florida, from Prescott, Arizona, thank you for joining us. You could be a part of a restoration group. We want to invite you to belong to our family, to our community. You can join with us. And you might be thinking, you know, I have a lot of friends that are kind of lonely right now. They need to know they're not alone. Maybe you should start a group. Maybe you know, like, you know they're not going to show up to just any group, but if you invited them, they would come to a group. Maybe you need to start one. One of my favorite things as we close, one of my favorite things to watch is road biking. I actually am not a road biker myself. Uh, the pants just don't really fit me well, but I just, I just find it fascinating. I, I love watch, watching road bike races. And one of my favorite things to watch is the huge group of bikers together called the Peloton. That's what it's called, the Peloton. It's not the stationary bike. It's, yes, it's called that, but the Peloton is the big group of riders. And when the Peloton is together, what happens is there's less resistance and in the middle of the Peloton, it's actually 95% less resistance. People will say when you get, it's like you get sucked into the middle and it's hard to get out. But once you're in and you're pedaling, it's like you're not even pedaling. So if you are tired, if you're exhausted, if you feel like you can't make it anymore, you get sucked into the middle and you're actually going further, faster than you ever thought you could. This is exactly what following Jesus is as a part of being the body of Christ. You might not feel like you can do it right now. You might be in a place where you're like, Jason, I just, I don't know if, I can do this anymore. That's what the body's for. You need to be sucked in and we need to help you go through this. Because when one suffers, we all suffer. And when one is honored, we all honor. And you might be going, I'm doing really well right now. We need you on the outside. We need you pedaling. We need you blocking the wind for, for the people that are suffering. We are in this together. But here's a crazy thing. If you've ever watched a road race, have you ever seen a Peloton crash? I mean, it is madness when one bike rolls over. Literally, it just, bikes are everywhere. There's, people's knees are bloody. People are taking their bikes off the ground. They're throwing them over a fence. They're running them in front and getting back on. Now, wouldn't it be insane to say, you know what? Because I crashed once in a Peloton, I'm never going back. You know, I crashed that one time. Yes, it, it, has so, it saves me so much more energy. I can go further faster, but I'm never going back. I'm doing life on my own. So many of us, when we get hurt by people, we can go, I'm never going back to a group. I want to invite you. We're not perfect. We don't have it all together, but you can belong as part of this body, the body of Jesus. You were built to belong. Let me pray. Father, we come before you right now, wherever we're at, 
I know there's so much pain. I know there's so much hurt. I know there's so much in people's lives that they don't even want to share about where they've, they wanted to belong, but they never felt like they did. And they have scars. God, you sent your son Jesus to die, to bleed, to heal our wounds. And so, God, I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, wherever someone's at right now, that you would heal any wound that they have had from people. God, I pray for the people out there that are struggling with just, how do I, how do I make the most of my time? God, I, I ask that, that you would just help them make the most of their time and they would realize that one of the best things they can do is to belong as part of the body of Jesus. And God, I just pray that you would do a work Lord, I pray for people in group, that are in groups right now, that they would be able to encourage one another, that they would spur one another on towards love and good deeds. God, we ask you to do a massive work in this church. God, uh, people are asking, when's the church going to go, going to open back up? The church never closed because the people... The followers of Jesus have been impacting people's lives. There are so many lives being changed right now in groups. And I thank you, God, that your church never closes, that it is open and it is open right now. And you are working and you are doing your work. And if you're here today and you've never made that decision to go, you know what? I want to belong to Jesus. I want to trust him. I want to make him Lord over my life. I want to invite you right now to make a decision to go, okay, I'm done holding back. I know that I'm not perfect. I know that I don't have it all together. And I want to turn from living a life for myself to living a life where I make Jesus king, where I put him first. If you want to make that decision, would you pray with me right now? Lord, we come before you. We are not perfect. I am not perfect. I need the grace that is of Jesus. He died so that I might live. And I accept that gift that I don't have to have it all together, but I just trust. I trust with my heart. And and it might only be just a little bit of trust, but just enough trust where I go, I want to make you Lord over my life. And I trust you. If you made that decision today, I want you to say amen. Amen. That means yes. And if you made that decision, please, please let us know. Why? Because you were built to belong. You're supposed to be a part of the body. We want to know you. We want to connect with you. We want you to be part of our family. So let a pastor know. Raise your hand and then fill out a connection card. Please let us know. Restoration, it has been such a joy to be with you today. Thank you so much. I love you. See ya.